Hi everybody, this is Mr. Claus and this is a short review on air masses and weather fronts. So the first thing we're going to talk about is air masses. You'll notice on ESRT page 13 you have these two letter codes for the different types of air masses. Now this is important because air masses is just a big bunch of air that takes on the characteristic of where it forms. So let's imagine this scenario, uh, this MP that I'm pointing to here. The M stands for maritime, which means over an ocean, which means it's going to be a wet air mass. The P stands for polar, which means it is going to be cold because it's forming up near the pole. So that air mass is going to be wet and cold. Now, that's just where the air mass forms. That MP air mass can then move over land, like this one here, could move over Canada and the United States, and that would bring wet cold weather, so they don't need to stay where they form. Um, so let's look at the two letter codes for a little bit. The first letter can be either an M for maritime or a C for continental, which M means maritime formed over water, C means continental formed over land. That is going to tell you if it is wet formed over water or dry formed over land. The second letter, which is always written in uppercase, uh, is either tropical or polar. Uh, or Arctic, we won't talk about that much for now. Uh, tropical means it's warm, it formed in the tropics, and polar means it's cold, it formed uh, over the polar areas. Uh, so you can tell from the first letter, the moisture content, the second letter, the temperature, everything you would want to know about the air mass that would move into an area. There's also continental Arctic, which is very, very cold. This is only uh, you see on those days that are like negative five, we don't see continental Arctic air moving into the U.S. that often, but occasionally we do. Um, where these air masses come together, so for example, right here, where this continental polar is meeting this maritime tropical, we have what's called a front. A front is just the boundary between two air masses couple different kinds of fronts we talk about. The first is a cold front. Now I'm going to play this animation. And what you'll notice is that when the cold front moves through, you can see that cold air is moving into an area. Okay? The cold front, I'm going to pause the animation, is just the line that separates the cold from the warm air. After the cold front goes by, you're in cool air. So if I rewind a second, Let's imagine I'm a person standing right where my mouse pointer is. I'd be in warm air, warm air, but I'd see some clouds forming. Then it starts to rain. Then it gets colder. So cold fronts, since the cool air here is lifting up that warm air, you guys all know within that, when that air rises, it cools to the dew point and condenses. Cloud form, it rains on all of our fences. Well, we got some air rising because the cool air that's more dense is pushing the warm air up. It is going to lead to a short period of very hard rain or snow. And the reason it's a short period is because it's a kind of a thin cloud. Once it goes by, it's gone. Uh, the symbol for a cold front looks like this. You can see up here. It is just these triangles. Uh, the triangles face in the direction that the cold front is moving, and it's usually drawn in blue if you're using color. Next thing we'll talk about is a warm front. Now, a warm front is a little bit different because you can see that warm air is moving into an area, but it can't wedge underneath the cool air because it's less dense. But as that warm air moves in, it kind of goes up the cool air like a ramp. Now you can see the clouds that are forming are much thicker horizontally. So it's going to bring a longer period of rain, but it's not as much air getting lifted up. So it's going to bring long period, but not so hard rain. And then after that goes by, the temperatures will be warmer because warm air has moved in. Uh, the warm front symbol looks like this. It's little red circles on the line, and the red circles point in the direction that the front is moving. Two other minor fronts we talk about a little bit. The first is a stationary front. This is where you have cool air meets up against warm air, and neither one can really move the other. Uh, you get a little bit of cloud formation because there's still some air rising, but it's not much. Since it doesn't move, that would be like long period, like kind of hard rain, nothing to really worry about. Uh, symbol for a stationary front looks like this. It's alternating circles and triangles. So the warm air would be down where my mouse is right now because that's the warm air pushing up this way, and the cold air would be where my mouse is right now, pushing down this way. 
Uh, the last front we talk about is an occluded front. It's a little bit more complicated because we have three air masses. What you can see here is I have two cool air masses come together and they actually lift some warm air completely off the ground. So since that warm air is getting lifted completely off the ground, that is a lot of air rising, and that gives me my very violent weather you can see starting to form at the end here. So occluded fronts are associated with very nasty thunderstorms, heavy winds, violent weather. Uh, the symbol for an occluded front is drawn in purple and is just alternating uh, triangles and circles in the direction of the front movement. Uh, so that's all you need to know. You need to know the symbols for each of the fronts and what kind of weather they bring. Thanks a lot.